We're starting today's video out in the garden, collecting some wonderful fresh herbs and greens for one of my favorite stews. So today we're going to be making Italian zucchini stew, basically zucchini stew. But as many of you know, we do not grow zucchini here on the farm. Uh, we don't grow it because it crosses with our yellow crooked neck squash and uh, it just keeps things simple if we don't have things that cross when it comes to seed saving. So we're going to make this with a little bit of a twist today and we're going to talk about that in a moment. But first, we need to gather up 12 cups of kale to go into this recipe. Another reason we love this recipe is because it uses a lot of kale and this is something that we are very, very good at growing. As you've seen in many of our garden tours, we have a lot of kale growing around here. So let's get picking. So I'm sort of estimating that this bowl here is going to be at least 12 cups filled up. So I've got quite a bit of kale. Whatever's left over we will have for uh, lunch. Uh, I also, if I'm short, I have a little bit in the fridge still. The other things that we've collected already was our couple mint leaves. Basil, you need to have uh, at least eight leaves. I like extra seasoning or spices in it, so I'm probably going to put double that. Uh, same thing with the mint. And the last couple things we're going to need out of the garden are our oregano and our thyme. Both these herbs are kind of starting to go. We're, we're getting to the straggler bits in the garden. So hopefully we've got enough, but uh, we're going to get some and then we're going to get inside and start cooking. But before we go inside, we're going to talk a little bit about essentially what we're going to use in this recipe. And that is we're using the fruit from our snake gourd plants. So aside from being an actually rather attractive plant when it goes to flower, they're quite productive. This plant is also a substitute for zucchini. But there is one of the gourds. Now this particular one's probably a little big, although it, it, we're finding that uh, they actually stay relatively usable to a decent size. It's hard to describe the taste of them. I find they're sweeter tasting to me than zucchini is. They're definitely firmer. There's more substance to them. They're kind of, uh, spongy is the wrong word, but in, they're, they're less watery and a bit more of a drier uh, fruit flesh. So as we've said, and we're just finally getting to the recipe part of the video now, today we're making zucchini stew. This is a staple around here. It's a fantastic stew that you can add to pasta sauces. We add it to curry. You could even eat it on its own. It is a meatless stew, vegetarian version. Uh, so it's really versatile and can be used in a lot of ways. Uh, you can just put it in a bowl, heat it up, and put a little bit of cheese on top, and it's fantastic that way as well. But as you saw from Chris, uh, Chris's little tidbit in here uh, a moment ago, we are using our snake gourds for this recipe. Now this is actually a first for us, so uh, take it all with a grain of salt on this recipe and I will report in a little bit as to how it turns out after it's been canned for a little while, but so far we've been using the snake gourds just like zucchini and it has worked out perfectly. So we're going to plunge ahead with this pressure canning recipe. Now don't forget, like I just said, this is a pressure canning recipe. You, you cannot water bath this stew. So one of the things that we're going to start with, if I can wheel it all out here, is our snake gourd. This one here is probably pushing about the top size that you really want to be harvesting for to make stews or, or that sort of stuff. Um, we've been using them in stir fries, everything like that. So here you can see one that I've already cut up into pieces that will go through the uh, food processor. and really kind of toony size, inch and a half to two inch wide, they're perfect, and no seeds inside yet, which is quite nice. They're just starting to develop, but similar to a zucchini. If you catch them small enough, you can just work the whole thing through the food processor. So that's our next step. We're going to pop these, cut them in half. I have my little uh, slice and dice on there for uh, pickles and things like that. It's going to be loud for one second. I'm only going to demonstrate for a moment. This was just to get some cut for you. I'll do the rest off camera. But basically that's what you're looking for. Kind of like the half sliced, similar to zucchinis. No need to take the skins off. And now I need to get six pounds of these. So we're gonna start with a couple tablespoons of olive oil in our pan. And then I'm gonna put in our onions. Ooh, sizzling. 
I'm going to write uh, in the description a recipe for a single batch that you wouldn't be canning. It's just for a meal to try. And then I'm going to write what I did for a big batch. So take a look down in the description below and you'll see a bit more details about the recipe. I'm not going to go into too much detail about how much I'm putting in in this video. So our six cups of onions are uh, cooking along nicely. Next I'm going to put in six cloves of garlic and three cups of chopped up red peppers. Now one thing I will say is I did the onions with the food processor. They're a little bit smaller. The peppers I actually cut by hand because I like them to be a little bit bigger pieces in there as you can see. You know, they're, they're pretty decent sized pieces. So we're going to let that fry up a little bit and then we're going to add the zucchini to this and uh, then take you through the rest. So now we're to the point of adding the zucchini in. Now the recipe calls for one and a half to two pounds of zucchini uh, per batch. And I'm tripling the batch because I'm canning this and I want enough to make it worthwhile. So I went on the high side and I did six pounds of zucchini and to be honest I'm not 100% sure that uh, it's going to work putting in the full six pounds. So I'm going to start with the four and a half, which would have been at the lower end, and then we're going to see. So this is six pounds right now, and I'm not going to put all of it in because as you can see, it's a mighty big bowl. So we're going to get that in and see how it cooks down a little bit. You don't want to cook this too much because as I said, it is pressure canned and you don't want it to be mush when you go to eat it later. Another thing that I love about this recipe is that the tomatoes are just bunged in there. I love things like that where you don't have to do a whole bunch of skinning and seeding and all that sort of stuff. These are straight from the garden, chopped up in the food processor. Skins, seeds, everything. And it just makes kind of a nice little puree, I guess you would say, which we're now going to put in on top of all of our goodies in here. So right now I have 12 cups. I often say it depends on the tomato, so I'm starting with 12 because I'm using San Marzano's and uh, we'll see if that is liquidy enough to uh, put this through the canner. If not, we're going to chop up a few more, but we're starting with 12 cups. Oh boy, it is starting to look pretty now, but I do think I'm going to do a bit more tomatoes. That's not quite enough liquid, I don't think, because we still have a whole bunch of kale to get in here and all the herbs. So uh, I'm going to actually do another four cups. So it'll be 16 cups of tomatoes that are going to go into this. So next up to go into our pot to be added to the stew is all the herbs. Now here we have uh, mint, basil, oregano, and thyme. Now I'm going to write what the recipe calls for uh, in the description. Uh, I tend to double what the herbs are. So I've actually it says six leaves of mint. I've got 12. It says six leaves of basil. I have 12, etc., etc. Uh, it does uh, call for a teaspoon of dried herbs for the oregano and the thyme. And I tend to um, operate on the one teaspoon of dried is one tablespoon of fresh. So that's what we're working with here. So I need to get a couple tablespoons of the oregano and the uh, thyme in here and then we will go from there. All right, we are getting to that stage. This has been simmering for about 10 minutes, which is about all you want because like I said earlier, you don't want the vegetables to turn to mush. This is a pressure canning recipe. Now, only thing left to do is add salt and pepper to taste and our kale. So we have here 12 cups of kale and we're going to uh, get this in here and oh it's not going to go easily of course so I may need to put you down to do it we'll see let's see oh just about just about I only made a bit of a mess basically we're just going to stir this in and mildly wilt it I'm going to add a tablespoon of salt and a teaspoon of black pepper and then we're going to be ready to jar it up so we have our pressure canner on the oven heating up and our stew is ready to go. I actually did a taste test on this. I ended up putting one and a half tablespoons of salt and one and a half teaspoons of pepper. It just kind of gave it a little bit more kick, which I really liked. But the snake gourd actually is tasting really, really good in this. It's not fully cooked yet, but that's how we want it. So we're going to get this in the jars. I'm anticipating that we're going to have at least 15 and we'll get it in the pressure canner. All right, so 
We ended up with 16 jars, all in the pressure canner. I did the pint jars because, as I stated earlier, we like to just pull one of these out and add it to a spaghetti sauce or marinara sauce and some meat and throw it onto pasta or mix it into some potatoes for a baked thing. So we never really use a full one liter. So I like doing these in the 500 ml. But they now have to can in the pressure canner for 55 minutes at 11 pounds pressure. And obviously that time depends on uh, where you are, your elevation, etc. So follow the instructions on your pressure canner. Uh, but we're going to get these done and I'm super pleased to have 16 more jars of this. So as I said earlier, I will put down in the description a single batch recipe as well as what I did today to make these 16 pint jars. Uh, but I hope you give this recipe a try. It's such a great one, whether you're using zucchini, snake gourds, uh, we've even used our uh, yellow crookneck squash. So it just depends what you have available. It's very versatile and easy to use in numerous ways when it comes time for the middle of winter and you're looking for those wonderful garden veggies. So hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below if you have uh, something similar that you do already. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful day.